you have your Bibles with you this morning, we'd ask you to turn to Job, Job chapter 1, and we're going to begin reading in verse 6. Job chapter 1, and we're going to begin reading in verse 6. The Bible says, there was a day, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There's none like him in the, him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. We praise you for it. God, we thank you that you put it into our own language that we might gain understanding. Lord, we pray that you would grant us uh, uh, safety. Lord, that you would grant us protection with your word. Lord, we know certainly that it's being compromised today. God bless your word to the hearts of the hearers. Uh, give us souls for your glory. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, some very familiar verses of Scripture, but we're going to look at, look at it a little bit differently, and we're going to be preaching on what Satan is not. What Satan is not. Now, we live in a day and age today uh, where Satan gets almost more attention than the Almighty. Uh, Satan is not a god. He is not the alternative god. Satan is a defunct fallen angel and nothing more. That's right. uh, he, uh, he is under uh, the obedience of the mighty God of heaven. And we'll see that even from this text and how that he is not what God is in any way whatsoever. And uh, the, the nature of his character is, uh, is totally different. Um, first of all, I want you to see uh, in our text verse, in verse six, uh, 6, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Now, the first thing I want you to see about Satan is that he is subservient to the Almighty. He's not in contest with him, but rather he has to be obedient with him. When God says, come, Satan has to come too. Uh, and the very same way in a lot of people today in, in modern religion, uh, listen, the lost is subservient to Christ too. One day he's going to say, it's enough. And, and they'll give a clear answer for everything they've ever done. They've not got one over on the Almighty, but rather they sat in submission to him, and Satan does too. Uh, you know what? Satan don't like those things preached because he don't remind, want to be reminded of his status, and he don't want to be reminded of his ultimate place where he'll be. Uh, he wants you to be afraid. He wants you to be scared. He wants you to twist your hands. He wants you to be worried. But you just remember this. He is not in control. Not, e not even a little bit. And, and so we see that when God made this calling, that Satan came to. In other words, He's not, om omnipo he's not omnipotent or all-powerful. He is under the power of God. The only person, the only being that's omnipotent, all-powerful, all authority is the Lord God Jehovah, no one else. And, and so we see that in this text that he's subservient. Verse, uh, uh, verse 7, the Bible says, and the Lord said unto Satan. Now, I want you to see uh, what he requires of Satan, and, and, and that is accountability. He said, where have you been, Satan? 
And Satan had to say, well, I've been doing this and that. Uh, you know what? If, if I want uh, discipline in my family, I don't, I don't say to other people's children, I don't say to my grandchildren, uh, Gracie, where have you been? It's not, she's not mine. But I'll say, Bella, what have you been up to? Because she's mine. She's obedient to me. And in the very same way, the Almighty said, Satan, where have you been? And what have you been up to? And it's because he's below the Almighty. He's under the Almighty. He, he, he is subservient to the Almighty. Now, what, notice the response of Satan, and we get another insight into his character. And the Lord said unto Satan, Which comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Now, we, we, sign, we find another piece of the puzzle, another character of the, uh, of the nature of Satan and, and the opposite nature of God, and that is this. Our God is omnipresent. He can be anywhere and everywhere, and in fact he is at all times because he's God. Now, I want you to see that Satan isn't got that ability. He doesn't possess that thing because he said, I've been in the earth walking up and down it and all through it, and the reason why he can't be everywhere at, the all, at, at all times. Uh, now, there may be demons and little imps here this morning, but I doubt sincerely that Satan is here. I don't know where he's at. You know, used to, I really believe that he attacked the Lord's churches. You know what? They're so small, I don't think he wastes he waste his time. Now, with all these limitations of Satan, he's not stupid. He's not a dummy. You know what I, where I think he's at? I think he's in these big millstone churches and dragging thousands upon thousands unto them. He's not beating Christians up. He's expediting uh, lost people that is preaching a false gospel. Again, he is not a dummy. And, and so we find that as uh, we see this uh, event unfold before us, that uh, number one, Satan can't be everywhere at the same time. And again, he's accountable to God. Where have you been? All the people in the, in the building this morning, there is only three that I can say, where have you been? And I will get an answer. You see what I'm saying? And again, because he's sub, subservient to the Almighty, Satan has to tell him. He has to be accountable. Uh, verse 8. And the Lord said, Satan... Have you considered my servant Job? Now, one thing that Satan does not do, and this is the thing that Satan hates about God, <laughs> is he doesn't, he doesn't like that accountability. Now, he is accountable to the Almighty, but he wants to avoid it. You know what sinners do? They avoid their accountability to God. Now, they may do that for a short time, but there's coming a day when they'll stand before the Almighty and they will give an account. And so he says, have you considered Job? Now, the response is, does he serve you for naught? You know what that says? It says, yeah, I've considered him. <laughs> you, you, you better believe it. I, I, I've looked him up one side and down the other. Now, in the very same way, uh, <laughs> Satan does that to... Uh, to the Lord's servants, and yes, he certainly, if they're effective, and you're going to check them out, because if they're effective, he wants to bring them down. And, and I don't know how big the earth was in this day. I don't know how many people were about the earth in this time, but uh, Job did this. Job was a minister unto his family, and the Bible says this, there's none like him in the whole earth. 
And because he was that way, because God recognized him as being one of the chief servants of God, he was also the chief target of Satan. Mm -hmm. Satan knew. Now, he's not ob omniscient. He's not ob all-knowing like the Almighty. But listen, he knows the stars in the class. He, he knows the top runners. He, he knows who it would be good to bring down. And so uh, the Lord all, God Almighty presents to him and says, hey, have you considered my, my servant Job? There's none like him in the earth. There, there's nobody that serves just like he does. Verse 9, Then Satan answered the Lord and, so, and said, Doth Job serve God for naught? Now we're going to find another ignorance of, of the devil, and that is the understanding of the redeemed. Now he understands lost people because lost people think just like he does. But he does not understand the redeemed. Again, he's not omniscient. He's not all-knowing. He doesn't know everything as unto God. And he thought, he really believed the only reason that Job served God was from, for, for financial blessings. That's, that's Joel Osteen in the modern day. He didn't, he didn't understand what was redemption about, and he didn't understand that Job served God because Job loved God. And the, and the physical blessings that, that were soon to be swiped away from him had nothing to do with his devotion to the Almighty. The devil don't get that. He just doesn't. You know why? Because he's a depraved creature. That's how he thinks. That, that's how he, he wants to be top dog. And he don't understand God's people being okay <coughs> with not being top dog. And, and, and so we find here that when the devil is attacking you, you remember Job. You can take his family. You can take his wealth. But you cannot take his life. See, he's on a string. He don't want you to know that. Satan don't want you to know that he's under the power of the Almighty. But you remember this, most certainly he is. He can only go so far. Now go with me to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 4, and we're going to read some more very familiar verses of Scripture. And uh, we'll, we'll notice a little bit about the character of Satan and his... <laughs> not being able to understand the nature of the Almighty or the nature of man. Yeah. He does not understand. You know, you know what? You would soon think that the devil would get it and be tired of beating his head against the same wall, but that will never be because his character does not change. And you know what? If the Lord doesn't come for a hundred years, he's still going to be doing the very same thing because he is not changed. That, that, that is his nature. And, and so we find that uh, Satan puts a move on Christ. Matthew chapter 4 in the first verse. The Bible says, Then was led... Then was Jesus led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, I want you to see that the Holy Ghost will, going to lead, will lead you into situations where you'll meet Satan face to face. Now again, I don't know how much time Satan wastes on me, if any, but I know he sends his imps my way. I know he send, sends his little devils to pester and worry me. I know, I know he does do that because I've experienced. But listen, Christ was the very living God in the flesh. So he saved him for himself. I, I fully believe, and we'll see in a minute, said that for a little while, 
But the majority of those 33 and a half years, I believe Satan was right on top of Christ day in, day out, just hoping that he would find an inroad. And you know why? Why did he do that? Why did he waste 33 and a half years? Very simple. He don't understand God, and he don't understand Christ. He is not an all-knowing creature. Uh, yeah. That belongs to the Almighty. And so, yes, certainly he will beat his head against the wall and will still be doing it after the millennial reign. Why? Because he does not know God. In the first verse, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted <clears throat> of the devil. The exact plan of the Almighty. And when he, meaning Christ, had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he, again, meaning Christ, was afterward a hungered, uh, possessing this flesh, understanding what this flesh was about. And when the tempter came to him. Now, uh, again, this will be uh, Satan doing the very bidding on his own behalf. Uh, there is a temptation constantly in this flesh. Now, the Bible says concerning Christ, he said he was made in the likeness of of sinful flesh. I don't know that he dealt with the same thing I deal with because he was not corrupt. He, he was not a sinful being, and I am. <laughs> he, he did not, he did not, so again, when it says that, I, I don't know if my finite little poor mind could ever get a hold, but I do know this, Satan was ignorant of, his, uh, of who he was. You know why he was so used to wrangling flesh? He's done it since the days of Adam. Eve was a knockover, and Adam was too. Very, very simply, boom, here's some nice fruit, and they were down. Down for the count. And, and, and that's how he thinks of Christ. He doesn't see Christ is the Almighty. So after these days of sacrifice and prayer, uh, Satan comes on the scene. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God. Now, uh, I, I've, been always, I've always wondered about that. But you know what? That shows the ignorance of Satan he, in fact, was indeed questioning the position of Christ. You know what? That shows how stupid he is. He is not all-knowing. You know what? Why does he do this? He, even today, does not recognize God in Jesus' office. He does not respect that they're above him in all things, and nor will he ever. That is his nature. And so as he approaches the Lord Jesus on this occasion, he is showing himself to be the stupidity that he really is, that he fact, in fact believed that he could conquer Jesus. And when he had fasted 40, uh, excuse me, uh, verse uh, 3, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. Now, one thing that Satan always gets us on, and it's always his approach, is through this flesh. Now, how he understands this flesh, I'm not sure, but I know that he does, because that's how he got Adam and Eve. He attacked them through the flesh, through their eyes and through their belly, right? That, that's his nature. I don't know, I'm not sure how he understands it, but I know that he does. He got a good understanding of the flesh when he incarnated Judas, did he not? He knew what you, he, he learned exactly how it feels to be in this thing. He's an ignorant being. <laughs> and so we see 
And he answered and said, uh, excuse me, if thou be the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he, meaning Christ, answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by the bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, Deuteronomy 8.3. Now, I want you to see that Christ simply quotes scripture. Now, you want to be equipped to deal with whatever imp, whatever little devil is worrying you, equip yourself with the Scripture. Equip yourself with the Word of God. Jesus answered him by something that the devil understood the Old Testament law. He said, I don't need it. Or, there's something more important, and that is the Word of God. There, there's something that exceeds the importance of eating, uh, of the needs of this flesh, and that is my spiritual need of the Word of God. Verse 5, And the devil taketh him into the holy city, meaning Jerusalem, and setting, the, and setting him on the pinnacle of the temple, and saith to him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angel charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Again, very much showing his ignorance or his lack of all knowing, of being omniscient. And he's saying, throw yourself down. Because this is what the Bible says, that you'll be hoisted back up. Now, I also want you to see where this occurred, the location of the event is at the temple. In fact, the Bible says at the very pinnacle of the temple. This was the second temple, not the temple that uh, Solomon built, but it was destroyed. And this is the second temple, never as grand as the first. And what he was really doing is questioning the Jewish religion. Not just the person of Christ, saying pretty much this thing is worthless. That this means nothing. Now, in one sense, we know that's true. The, the temple was a building, right? But who didn't know that? Satan. Satan thought it was something special. Satan thought it was something uh, at the very top. And so Satan, again, believing on a carnal term, said, hey, you know, Cast yourself down. And uh, notice that the Lord Jesus again answers him in plain scripture and stuff that ought to be known. It is written again, verse 7, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So say, uh, Jesus said, yes, it would work. I could throw myself down. And because it's not time yet for me to go, he would bind me up. But that's simply tempting God. He answers him with scripture. He answers him, again, Deuteronomy 6.16. He answers him with scripture. Verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up to exceeding high mountain. So he offers him food, which worked with Adam and Eve. He offered him religion on the pinnacle of the temple, and now he offers him governmental authority. You know what? That meant nothing to Jesus. He did not know Christ, and so he acts like a lost person. He, he acts like a person that, that does not understand spiritual things, and you know why? Because he doesn't. He doesn't understand spiritual things. And so he said, I'll give you the whole world. Just bow down and worship. And you know what? Huh. He would have came through with a falsehood. Remember, uh, you know what? I bet after the first couple of bites, whatever they ate, I bet it wasn't that good. I bet it was routine. There's a lot of fruits I simply do not like, and I've often wondered exactly what this was all about. But he gives he gives Jesus something he thought he knew because he thought he understood the mind of God. 
Then Jesus said unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for, thou, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Deuteronomy 6, 13. He answers him with scripture every time. He describes what we ought to be, but Satan did not, did not understand who he was. Verse 11 and the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. The Gospel of Luke says, and the devil leaveth him for a season. Right. And so we find that, you know what, you may be well encouraged this morning, but an imp will be your way. Mm -hmm. He's just left you for a little season. He'll come back and and worry you to death. If you ever, in the spring when the mosquitoes are so bad, we're sitting out on the porch and I finally get him, you know, they get you, in your ear just worry you to death and you finally get him on your skin and you're like, oh, peace. And about 10 minutes later, you know, you know it ain't the one you just dealt with because you got him. But another one comes your way and starts the very same attack. That is Satan's imps. And they don't understand the redeemed. Now you that are lost, he understands you a little bit because he knows your flesh inside and out. That brief time that he was inside Judas, he learned the flesh really, really, really good. Another thing that Satan understands very, very well is angelic beings. He was one. We don't know how long that lasted, uh, um, but it, it, it was a great period of time that he was an angelic being, and he says, even himself, and he's, the Lord Jesus said, and even Satan transferring himself into an angel of what? Light. Something that we all enjoy, something that, that, that's necessary for sight. He says, he transfers himself, not an angel of darkness, although he is, but he can look like everybody else. Mm -hmm. He can look good. Mm -hmm. I fully believe this. He created the Catholic religion. And, man, it looks good, does it not? Uh, if you don't think the Church of England is fixing to bury their queen, it will be the most elegant thing that you've seen since the wedding of Princess Diana and uh, now King Charles. It will be elegant and beautiful. And you know why? That's what they want. That's the looks is all that Satan understands. He has no understanding of the spiritual man. He is who he is. Now back in Daniel, Daniel chapter number 10, we're going to read, uh, begin reading it about uh, verse, uh, in the first verse, along in there. Daniel chapter 10, in the first verse, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar, that's what the world called him, and the thing was true. But the time appointed was long, and he, under, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. And in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Now, I want you to see that Daniel got this vision, and the Bible says here that he understood it, and the result was mourning. Now, we all know now that it was the death of the nation Israel. It was that they would, in fact, be going back into captivity. And, and Daniel got that, and he was sorry for it. You know what these health and wealth teachers uh, teach today? That every time you hear from God, it's cartwheel time. Well, listen, it wasn't cartwheel time for Daniel, was it? 
It, it, it was such a horrible thing. The Bible says he grieved three weeks over it. That, 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 and that, listen, dear friend, still hearing from God. <laughs> and you know what? The devil was so stupid he thought he accomplished something. Verse 2, in those days I, Daniel, was mourning, uh, uh, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in, in, in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till the three whole weeks were, were fulfilled. And in the fourth and twentieth day of the, month, of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is, which is uh, Hidekel, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of a euphas. And his body was like the burrow, and his face as the peering of lightning, and his eyes as and his eyes as the lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color of a polished brass, and the voice of his words were like the voice of a multitude, the very being of an angel. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. Very much in like the redemption of Paul. Therefore I was left alone, and I saw the great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned into corruption. <laughs> he saw himself for who he was, and I retained no strength. And yet, I heard, and yet heard I the voice uh, of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, and set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. For unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of uh, Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Now I want you to see, Daniel saw the vision. Apparently, it was a devastating vision, no doubt the destruction of Israel again. And, and he was tore up about it, and he prayed for understanding. And, and, and the Lord God of heaven dispatched an angel to encourage him the very same day. But 21 days later, finally he shows up. And, and here he uses the devil as a king. But it was no doubt the devil. He said he withstood him 21 days. And then he arrived on the scene. Isn't it a wonderful thing when the devil is in his full opposition that you just keep standing there? You just continue whatever his hindrance is this morning, whatever his hindrance has been this year, just keep going, withstanding. And you know what? If I understood this right, Daniel did. Daniel withstood, Daniel was patient, Daniel was long-suffering, and the Lord finally arrived on the scene. And see, the devil is still using that today. He stands in opposition of the things of God because he's ignorant, because he's, he has no understanding. And so just keep on keeping on uh, because the devil, see, he doesn't have unending strength like the Almighty. The Almighty is omnipotent. He's all strong, all powerful. But you know what? Satan wears out. He needs a rest. He, 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 needs, some, uh, he needs a break every now and then just like you and I. And he finally gives up for a time. And I also want you to see this. He knew that angel was bringing some good news. So he hindered him. You know, uh, he was coming to say, keep going, Daniel. All is well. 
And he, the devil, sure did not want Daniel to hear that message. That's what he hindered him. He, he discouraged him, and the Bible says, for a time. And then, uh, and then the Lord brought uh, encouragement. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, Paul writing the first time to the church at Thessalonica. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now this is Paul. This is the modern church age. This is the dispensation that we now live. And notice the word. We'll read verse 17 to get the full thought. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavoring the more abundantly to see you face to, to uh, see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Now, this is in the new church day, uh, age. This is the living dispensation here and now. The only real difference is that Paul was an apostle born out of time, and you're not. <laughs> but you are a Christian, and Satan hinders us. Now, why, was it, uh, why did he specifically say Satan hindered, uh, hindered me? Time, I would come time and time. You know why? Because Paul was doing great things in the ministry at that time. He was writing books we still treasure even today. He, he was preaching the gospel, and Satan hated that. And he wanted, and again, being ignorant of God's uh, of God's character, he thought he could end that book in your life. He, he thought he could stop those words, but he couldn't. He can hinder for a while, but he is not going to thwart the plan of God because he can't. It's an impossibility. And so I encourage you this morning, and I want you to be encouraged that this is Satan's situation. Is it going to stop him? No, 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 dear friend. He's going to continue to dispatch the imps. If you're doing something great for the cause of Christ, he's going to come himself and try to bring you down and try to run you through the mud and try to get you to quit. Why? Because he don't understand redemption. He thought he could make Paul stop, but he never did. Last place I want to read with you this morning, Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Verse 6, uh, verse uh, 10. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 10. The Bible says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Sure. So we think we see the ultimate end. Who's in control? And you know, surely his punishment is well deserving. But the benefit for us is great. We cannot imagine a lifetime not being hindered by one of the devil's hymns. We truly can. We, we don't know what that piece would be about. But we will. <laughs> the whole band and Satan himself thrown into the lake of fire and there'll be a peace, the Bible says, that passeth all understanding. You talk about worshiping him then, worshiping the Almighty with no sense of evil whatsoever. Um, the, this, this old poor mind can't comprehend it, but I do know that it's real. Mm -hmm. 